So ladies and gentlemen, this is Steve with My Audio Stuff, and I wanted to do another video for you here. I had told you that I had some uh, commercial grade audio equipment, and this is another one of them. Uh, prior to this, I'd showed you my Marshall MXL 2003 pressure gradient microphones, which are pretty much, I don't know, these are 1960s terms that I'm using for you, but the last word <laughs> in high fidelity reproduction, you know, those are microphones that you would use in the studio. And this is a tape recorder, a reel-to-reel -reel more or less, that you would use in the studio as well. This is more of a commercial grade deck. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. Most most reel-to-reels, which is what this is, for home use, most of them, uh, run at, you know, three and three quarters and seven and a half inches. And those are the speeds you get, which of course blows away cassette decks. Most of them, aside from the Bix, would run at one and seven eighths inches and all of that. But this thing just has one speed and that's 15 inches per second. And because of that, it takes gigantic 10 inch reels on it or even bigger than that. And at 15 inches per second, the reels last about 20 minutes a piece. That's about all the time you're gonna get out of it, but that's long enough for the vast majority of, of uh, music uh, material that you would record on this. This is an eight track deck. So it uses not quarter inch tape, but half inch tape. Half inch tape that runs at 15 inches per second. Um, this is a two head design, which is very rare for commercial decks, but I think Tascam thought, well, at 15 inches per second, you don't have that much of a benefit with a third head, and they're probably right. Uh, properly calibrated, and this is calibrated, I believe, for Ampex 456. Um, this thing will get somewhere around 30 to 30,000 hertz, plus or minus one to two dB. And it'll give you that frequency range at 100% saturation, or pretty darn close to it, which blows away the vast majority of cassette decks, even if they have amorphous heads and Dolby HX Pro. Uh, and the reason for that, obviously, is because you're, you're just running bucket loads of tape past the heads every second. So there's a lot of room for dynamic range and saturation, but this is more of a commercial grade deck. It'll record real soft and real loud. I don't know, 100% saturation on this thing would probably be off the uh, VU meters on a cassette deck. I mean, it, it just simply couldn't even show you what this would do. Uh, this also features uh, DBX noise reduction and it's type one which is for wideband reproduction. I think some cassette decks have DBX, but it's normally type two, I think. Uh, type one gives you the extended, I think, upper frequency reproduction and things like that. It's made for wideband devices, like commercial grade devices. And you can either run this with a DBX on or off. When it's off, this has a signal to noise ratio equivalent, probably pretty close to Dolby C or the upper ends of Dolby B. So. With noise reduction off, this will still uh, record pretty quiet, probably around 70 dB, which is pretty darn good. If you turn it on, this gives you noise reduction in, its, in excess of 105 decibels. So I think it's actually 108 dB. Uh, and that is just unbelievable. That's, I think, beyond Dolby S and all of that. Uh, so this is a deck you would use more or less to record the source and then you could make CDs, commercial grade CDs and records. I mean, if that's what you want to do with this, keep in mind this is only eight tracks, but for most amateurs and things like that, and even some of the professional people, eight, eight tracks is enough. And I've used this for numerous recordings that I have made. And this is a superb deck. Uh, again, this is calibrated for Ampex 456, I believe it is. Um, people ask where the calibration controls are, and they're in the bottom of this unit. There's a hatch which you can take off underneath it. You actually have to turn the unit over. It's quite heavy. And then that hatch comes off, and there are eight, <laughs> eight separate audio cards. And you can actually pull them out if you have to replace them or service them. But on each of these cards, there are pots for the bias, for the uh, VU meter, for the DBX, and for the record EQ, high and low, those are some extra settings uh, that commercial grade decks have on them. And the circuitry for this more or less is discrete for the playback and record amps, 
Uh, these are probably type A amplifiers, so they're on all the time, but they give you extremely clean, pure recordings. And again, that's because this is more uh, made to be the source uh, for commercial grade recordings. But this is not a bad deck at all. This represents more or less the very end of Tascam's foray into the analog commercial deck market. Obviously, they make bigger decks than this, like their 16-track deck, which used uh, inch tape rather than half-inch tape. Uh, but because this is at the very end, this is about a 1994, 93, 94, it has pretty much all the refinements of the uh, analog uh, era. Uh, this also features a very refined capistan and roller system, pinch roller system for the tape. It is computer controlled, logic controlled, and it runs flawlessly. Uh, gone are the days when you'd have the rewind or fast forward disasters, uh, when you'd have you know tape damage from the way this thing would play back or record. It handles the tape seamlessly. So again, this is probably the very end of the analog era for Tascam, and so as a result of that, it has all the refinements you can see some of the controls for it here. And obviously you can activate each of the eight tracks or none of them if that's what you want. The DBX sound reduction systems, tracks one through four, you can activate it, tracks five through eight, or just shut it off. Uh, variable pitch and all of that. Another thing available for this, which I've used extensively, is the remote control. I got this thing on eBay, <laughs> believe it or not for a hundred bucks, but it works perfectly. It plugs in with a DIN in the back. And that cable is probably, what, 15 feet long or more. And you can use it when you're at your instrument to stop the deck, back it up, and then punch in on other tracks. Um, some other uh, interesting uh, features that this has, you have the uh, tape reset counter and all of that. And you can use that for editing, I think, where it, it, it'll show you where the edit goes, all of that, auto in and out. Um, nothing really negative to say about this. I suppose some people would be bothered by the fact that this is a two-head reel-to-reel -reel deck, but, you know, at 15 inches per second, and with the modern electronics, including DBX, you don't really notice it. You can sing with yourself on this deck and all of that. You don't need a third head for any of that. You would just need it for monitoring. But this is still really an excellent deck. I got this from a radio station that I worked at. Uh, they bought this thing and never used it. I mean, they just didn't. Sat in the corner, so I asked the owner of the station, one of the owners, um, how much he would take for it. And he had me buy him a DAT deck. And he said, if you buy me a DAT, and this was in the, I don't know, 1996, 97, then I'll let you have this deck. So I spent 700 bucks and bought him the DAT deck that he wanted. It was a Sony, and then he gave me this deck. So there you have it. Uh, brand new, I think these things at the time ran about $3,000, $4,000, something like that. But I still use this thing today, um, and it's still really just, a, just an excellent deck. You want for nothing when you use this. So this is probably Tascam's last foray, more or less, into the analog tape market. It's so a Tascam TSR-8. Uh, if you have any questions, you can put it in the comments and all of that. Check out my other site, A Father's Devotions. You'll find a link for it on this site. This is Steve with My Audio Stuff. God bless you all.